Hello handy viewers such as you are and welcome to this Don't Touch the Beard episode 15. How are you? Are you well? Everything okay? Oh, uh, sorry to hear about that. Hopefully the doctor's topical cream will help you clear it up. Um, welcome to this. It is um, a Fisherman's Guild versus Union. Uh, but who should be playing what? Well, inspired by the absolute beasting that my mate Steve gave me a, a few episodes back, I will be trying out the Fisherman's Guild. As much fun as the morticians have been, I want to try something a little less moving parts, if that makes sense. I found the morticians great fun to use, but perhaps a little draining. Uh, I'm going to give the fishermen a go because they are quite singular of purpose. Uh, something that I found very freeing in the time when I used them, you know, there's not a lot of point doing damage. <laughs> so why bother? That's how I played them, perhaps I'm wrong. Um, and I am joined this week by Mr. Jason Mountain from Singled Out. An absolute pleasure to host Jason down at Darksphere for this game. Um, long overdue, and uh, Jason and of course Andrew, very very helpful in getting this channel up and running in the beginning and the early days, all that time couple of months ago um, so lovely to sort of come full circle and to have Jason on the channel Jason unsurprisingly is using Union oh I can do that thing that Vince does where I go my opponent this week is Jason who is currently ranked third in the world in Union and then a thing appears and shows you that that's true ah oh, it's like I'm good I'm not so my rosses then, I had Shark, Corsair, Tentacles, Salt, Jack, Sakana, Grey Scales, Kraken and Siren. Uh, Jason in turn had Blackheart, Vet Rage, Strongbox, Gutter, Decimate, Benediction, Mist, Grace and Snakeskin. Union win the roll off with my own dice, thanks Jason, um, and elect to kick off. Kick off? Kiff, 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 kick off. That's a word. <laughs> So we blind reveal captains, me with Corsair and Tentacles and Jason with Black Heart. Wait, no, Veteran Rage and Strongbox. Hang on. Um, I then went with Grayscales, Jack, Siren and uh, Sakana. <laughs> um, he went with Gutter Decimate, Benediction and Minx. So the Union kick off with Mist and it goes over that way um, on the pitch thing that you can see on screen. I'm so good at this. I then allocated three to Corsair, none to Tentacles, one to Siren, four to Sakana, two to Jack and three to Grayscales. It'll settle down in a minute, promise, like, things will calm down. Probably. Union in turn, that is two on Rage, two on Strongbox, two on Minx, two on Gutter, none on Benediction and four on Mist. Now, that's a great kickoff as far as I'm concerned. Really nicely placed, very shallow uh, and very out wide. So I start with grey scales and sprint towards the rough ground. No way I can leave the ball free as he'll just pass it back into his line and then the uh, horror show begins. So I finish just shy of the rough ground and then where do they go to go and collect the ball and come back again? And then kick the ball to space, and I'm really hoping for a uh, reasonably accurate pass to Jack, although I'm well outside of my attack range, just to attack range, pass range, just to try and keep the ball safe from mist. Naturally, that doesn't happen, and the ball goes all the way over there. Um, hopefully, that's far enough away from mist. Um, a error, perhaps, on my part, a risk, certainly, but. It was a phenomenal kickoff. I can't leave the ball loose. I couldn't really leave the ball on grey scales at this point. Um, the Even with unpredictable, uh, Mist has acrobatic to get back in. So, yeah, that's that. Ball's there. Let's see what happens. So Mist activates first for the Union, and due to being within six inches of a friendly Salutian model, he gains a two-inch dodge, thanks to the motivated rule. He declares a charge against Jack. I have absolutely no way of countering or bracing or entering a defensive stance or any other rules that exist or don't exist within the game due to a complete absence of momentum. So that's tax 7 versus the 3s and 1s of Jack's 3 net hit is a momentous push dodge. So shoving Jack out of the way and missed making a beeline directly towards that ball. He then acrobatics for a 2-inch dodge, snapping the ball. 
And with his final influence, that is a missed tap-in, bringing the score uh, four to the Union, none to the Fish. Not a great deal that I could have done about that. Knew it was coming. Great kickoff from Jason, and uh, already behind with the first activation. <laughs> so the ball scatters out. Um, it's uh, going to land just in front of Tentacles. The inevitability of the kickoff missed goal. Let's see if we cannot reply in kind with the inevitability of a bit of uh, smooth passing footballing game from the fish. It is their speciality after all, and then a uh, nicely set up Sakana goal really before the Union get off their lines. That's my plan at least. Happy the Union don't really have anyone to threaten the ball at this stage. I activate Jack and jog base to base with Mist. So first attack, tack fives versus fives and O's. One net hit, one damage. Ah, brilliant. <laughs> Mathematically, I should get at least two for that momentous push. Start nudging Mist towards the end of the board. But hey, no. Let's uh, let's have some more terrible dice. <laughs> right, another one. Ah, oh, brilliant. <laughs> Attack five versus fives and O's. No net hits, nothing at all. No momentum, no pushing. Damn it. Uh, Benediction takes a jog a little up the pitch. A action which doesn't require dice rolling, so is bound to succeed. <laughs> Tentacle jogs up, uh, snaps the ball and unsnaps the ball directly to Corsair. Strongbox in turn uh, puts confidence onto Gutter. Um, and then jogs a little way up the pitch and comes fantastically. One thing I didn't realise is that confidence is not a once per turn play. Once he gets into his new position and is within four inches of Minx, he puts confidence on her as well. Uh, activate Corsair, who passes the ball to Siren. Naturally, this doesn't happen. <laughs> my, boy, my dice have been awful, awful to start the game off. Hopefully that's not a trend that continues the whole way through. Spoilers. It does. Uh, I like to think that this is Obulus taking his revenge at me changing teams. Uh, so there we go, a one, a two, and a two, and time to scatter the ball. Thankfully the ball still scatters in such a fashion that it snaps to Siren, but no momentum generated. Corsair then jogs down towards uh, Mist, and bringing the friendly sort that he is uh, due to tag along the squiddly puss tentacles goes along for the ride. Thanks to all the crowd outs, that is Corsair attack 8 versus 5s and O's. One net hit doing one point of damage again because I can't tackle because he hasn't got the ball. <laughs> what do you do? Uh, second swing, attack 8 versus 5s and O's. Three net hits this time is a momentous knockdown. That is more like it. Over the other end, Rage spends uh, two to quick time minks forward two inches. He, in their turn, takes a jog forward himself. Siren makes a successful pass to Sakana, immediately cementing her position as a woman of the match, or MVP for our American viewers. Um, and you two pass and move um, makes a four inch dodge into cover. And with a smug sense of satisfaction that she is better than everyone else on her team due to actually being able to accomplish something, Siren jogs into cover herself. Back with the Union, Gutter sprints forward. I activate Sakana, who thanks to Cover of Darkness at the beginning of any activation will gain plus two, plus two move. I then jog him to engage uh, veteran Captain Rage and prepare to make some attacks. And of course, uh, Sakana does have anatomical precision, so he will ignore Rage's armor, making Rage uh, fours and O's rather than fours and ones. So that's the attack five of Sakana versus the fours and O's of uh, Captain Rage. Two net hits is enough for a momentous dodge. Second swing, tax, uh, five versus fours and O's, nothing, nothing, tra la la, nothing. Let's give it another go, tack five versus fours and O's, three net hits this time, and again that is enough for the momentous dodge, which ultimately is all I need. So um, I uh, take the shot on goal and Sakana makes it, a absolute beauty despite being engaged by the folk around him. That makes it now a fish for Union Force, so there's the reprisal that I was looking for. Unsurprisingly, I play knee slider at this point, meaning that I can dodge up to my max move the hell away from the Union team as doubtless reprisal from them will be coming in turn. Ball kicks out, lands just next to Strongbox, and uh, Jason elects not to snap the ball to anyone. So with Furious on Minx, uh, she declares a free charge against Sakana. Sakana, in turn with Poised, declares a free counterattack. Yay, free things. So with the confidence from Strongbox, that is Tack 8 versus 4s and 1s, 7 net hits is a momentous 3 a double dodge and a momentous 1 dodge. 
Due to Hunter's Prey, being damaged by Minx effectively means now that I am at minus one armor. Oh, I'm snared even. Snared. Uh, Sakana swings back. He is attack 5 versus 4s and O's due to the anatomical precision. That's 4 net hits, which is enough for a double dodge. No momentum, as it's not my activation, but still, I can get the hell away. Minx uh, satisfied with the end of her activ activation. She's caused damage, so she can use Back to the Shadows to make a 4 inch dodge and get even further away from each other. Uh, Union win the roll off and uh, elect to go first. So, Jason's allocation he puts four on Rage, one on Strongbox, two on Minx, four on Gutter, two on Benediction, and none on Mist. I, in turn, put six on Corsair, none on Tentacles, three on Siren, one on Sakana, three on Jack, and three on Grayscales. So we're going to start off with Gutter here, who charges Siren, um, who is in turn declares a, uh, a counterattack. Now, as we've not really seen Gutter on the channel before, apart from the other time you knew on, so we have seen her before. <laughs> um, here is a summary of her Life Drinker and Anatomical Precision rules. So essentially, for every time she causes damage, she will heal a point of damage, and she ignores armor when she goes in. Nice. So that is Tack 8 versus the Fours and those of Siren. Seven net hits. Oof. It's a knockdown and a momentous one point of damage. Second swing at the now knocked down um, Sirens. So that's Tack 4 versus 3s and O's. One net hit is momentous one point of damage. And finally, Tack 4 versus 3s and O's. Three net hits is a momentous two points of damage. So I activate Jack, who wails on the knockdown mist. That is Tack 7 versus 4s and O's. Five net hits is enough for a momentous double push. I then jog up into base-to-base -base contact with her, um, taking Jason's advice here that I don't need to charge. I'm sure that won't come back to bite me. So needing more momentum, I get tack 5 versus 4s and O's, one net hit, one point of damage. Thanks, Jason. Massive, massive thanks. Fortunately, I've got another point of influence. So that's tack 5s versus 4s and O's, one net hit, one point of damage. Siren, I massively appreciate the fact that you have able to do something that was needed and worthwhile. <laughs> Everyone else, have a word with yourself, lads. I then activate Jack's heroic play, Trident Tested, which will give um, her missed a four inch push off the edge of the board. Fortunately, nothing needs to be wrong for this, so it happens. So that is Fish 6, Union 4, Mist gets jacked off. Wait, what? It was at this point, oh handy viewers, such as you are, that I made the following pun about both my sandwich and one of the players on my team. If you don't enjoy this, you might as well turn this channel off now, unsubscribe and never come back, because this is like the height of my humour and there's a lot more of this to come. That's cracking. Uh, is it? No, no, that's cracking. <laughs> <laughs> I make absolutely no apologies, um, and then Minx uses a furious charge against Sakana. So I use uh, my momentum from the takeout to declare defensive stance and get a free counterattack due to poised. So that is Take versus the fives and ones of Sakana. Two net hits is a momentous one dodge, and due to Hunter's prey, Sakana is now snared. If it wasn't already, I forget. You tell me. That's how this works. Counter attack then, this is tack 6 versus 4s and O's, 3 net hits, I do 1 damage and a weak point. Doesn't write down the damage though, does he? No, I have noticed that too. <laughs> so that's tack 4 versus 3s and 1s of Sakana's 2 net hits is a momentous 1 dodge. And then lastly, tack 4 versus 3s and 1s, 3 net hits is a momentous 2 dodge this time. She then once more dodges back to the shadows at the end of her activation with that 4 inch dodge due to causing damage. Corsair up this time and he goes for a little jog uh, heading in the general direction of the melee up top. Tentacles tags along using tag along. And then spend the two influence to chain grab on gutter. Naturally this fails miserably. <laughs> I've no idea if I'm making bad decisions or just general poor judgement all round. I don't think so. I think legitimately my dice have abandoned me for this game. Um, I'm it's very, very that I rarely that I say that because I think that is the crutch of uh, the bad gamer to be utterly brutal. Um, and in this case, I am that bad gamer. Pass after pass has failed. Chain grabs failed. The grab has failed now. Um, when I've needed like two net hits for momentum, I've gotten one. Um, I 
<laughs> I can only assume this is the wrath of Obulus uh, ensuring that things don't go to plan. Oh, I do it again because it's not once per turn and it works. Hooray! So it's cost like four influence to get her there. I best punch her in the face. That is tax seven versus fours and ones. Four net hits, three points of damage. Second swing, I was meant to do like four of these, but it turned out to be only two. Tax seven versus fours and ones, three net hits. I go for the momentous no 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 knockdown. Over at the successful end of the pitch, <laughs> Strongbox activates and snaps the ball too. Now I can see what Jason's trying to do here, is trying to extend the threat range of Rage and put him into Corsair, particularly with the crowd out now from Gutter, if he can stand her up, which he probably can. However, um, the pass from Strongbox would be an incredibly risky thing, given Strongbox's kick stat. So, sadly, <laughs> he elects to unsnap the ball, um, uh, snapping the ball to Rage. Um, but this will mean that Rage will need to pass the ball, probably to Benediction, uh, in order to shunt himself forward by four inches. Having not passed the ball, he's got a point of influence spare, so he sticks confidence on that Rage. I activate tentacles and immediately pass the activation, trying to force both clock and thinking on Jason. So Rage bonus times a pass to Benediction, as Rage does not have the greatest kick in the world, uh, it is successful. He spends the point of momentum immediately generation to, to do give and go to, yes, as I suspected, shove him forward four inches. He then uses come on mate for two momentum on gutter to stand her up. Oh, this is all looking vaguely prophetic. Didn't see this coming, however. He plays Heroic Landing, so a friendly model spends momentum to use a Heroic play. He gains back a point of momentum, effectively making it free as long as you have the momentum to spend. He then uses Bloody Coin on himself. Oh, it's all looking a bit dangerous. So uh, Rage declares a Furious Charge into Corsair. I spend the point of momentum to declare a counterattack. So that is tack 12 versus 3s and 1s, 11 net hits, and he goes for the double knockdown result here. I've largely forced this onto Jason as due to Sturdy, I will ignore the first knockdown, so one knockdown will not be enough. Uh, tack 12 against the 3s and 1s, even with a tough hide on uh, Corsair, Rage can put an awful lot of damage on the charge. So by declaring the counterattack and threatening that um, momentous push on 3, which gets the 4 1 model with tack 6. Um, due to the presence of tentacles, uh, isn't um, isn't impossibility. Yes, Rage has got quick time to to get himself back in again, but then I've wasted half of his influence. Yes, I've got that momentous knockdown, but honey, you know, I could waste more momentum. So that tack twelve could have been a lot worse. I, you know, the, this is still a benefit, and then. <laughs> words i can use them um it's still going to turn out pretty much the way it is but what i've done hopefully here is just take the teeth out of the attack would you have done this dis differently oh handy viewer such as you are if so um please let me know in the doobly doo joshua <laughs> next attack tack eight versus twos and ones uh, bloody coin and catapai pretty much cancelling each other out so that is four net hits doing a momentous three points of damage Third attack, attack 8 versus 2s and 1s, again 4 nut hits and again a momentous 3 points of damage. Finally then, attack 8, 2s and 1s, 4 nut hits, momentous 3 damage. So all told, I have a double knockdown and then 9 points of damage and 3 points of momentum generated from Corsair. Could have been a lot worse, all told. I activate Sukarna, who jogs up to Minx. And takes a swing at her, so that is tack 5 versus 4 and O's. Two net hits is a momentous dodge, generating me some precious, precious momentum. Benediction takes himself a jog up towards the uh, barrier there, toward uh, near the uh, Union deployment zone. The intention here is very clear to kill the ball on a potentially 3-4 model. Um, so I need myself a plan to get that back as quickly as possible, and probably one that doesn't involve either Siren or Corsair, which would be my usual go-to in this sort of circumstance. I say theoretically, this is the first time I've used fish. <laughs> he then uses Brace to give himself plus two armor against the next attack. Yep, that's some good ball killing. I activate Siren and use Point of Momentum uh, um, to use Take a Breather to remove both the Knockdown and Snared condition from her. She then charges into Rage, that is Tack 6 versus 4s and 1s. One net hit is a momentous dodge. Siren, you continue to be reliable. 
Second attack, attack four versus fours and ones. Two net hits this time, but I still elect for the momentous dodge, netting me some more precious, precious momentums. I then use come on mate on Corsair, clearing of him, him of the knockdown condition and cheating, of course, because I've already used take a breather. Bad beard. I then activate Grayscales because I'm up in activation due to taking out Mist. Yes, I'm surprised too. Um, he then weds they goes. And then makes his way into cover, uh, trying to get him involved with that melee that's going on in the centre of the pitch. No idea if that's a good idea or not. Union win the roll-up automatically and elect to go first. And by roll-up, <laughs> of course we roll off. So, going into turn three, Jason puts four on range, none on strongbox, one on minx, two on gutter, two on benediction, and four on mist. In turn, I put none on Corsair, one on Tentacles, three on Siren, four on Sakana, three on Jack, and three on Jack Grayscales. So we start the turn with Rage, who pops his legendary play, My Gang, so whilst within a six inch aura, all friendly models gain a plus one attack and plus one damage when they are crowding out models. And so the onslaught on Corsair continues. It is Take versus threes and ones. Four net hits. That is a momentous three damage. I have declared a counter attack. Which goes in at attack six versus fours and ones. Four net hits is a momentous knockdown. Um, may seem an odd choice for a counter attack. But I'm, again what I'm trying to do here is make him waste momentum by using my free one. And I pushed him away. He's not used his advance yet. Um, so we shall see how this goes. In, looking back in retrospect, um, the push would have been better, but I'll show you why that is in a second. He uses the point of momentum to take a breather. Second attack, attack eight versus threes and one. Seven net hits is enough for a momentous three push. Attack eight, threes and ones, four net hits, momentous three damage is enough now to take out Corsair. So that brings the score 6 all Union and Fish with a Rage takeout on Corsair. Uh, Jason plays the Man Marking card, um, giving him an extra 2 points of influence next turn. If next turn happens. Rage then uses Red Fury on Gutter, allowing her to make an attack on Tentacles. So Gutter is attack 5 versus the 4s and those are Tentacles. 4 net hits is enough for a push, pushing Tentacles out of her engaging rage. Now this is exactly why I should have gone for that push over the knockdown with the counter attack with Corsair. Rage is now free to charge with Furious even though he doesn't have any influence left. Um, whereas he would have had to have used uh, quick time or something similar to get back in on Corsair. Meaning Corsair would still be very much alive at this point and that Furious would be entirely negated. That said, hindsight is a wonderful thing and this is a phenomenal play by Jason. A man that knows his guild very, very well. Hence being third in the world. Um, so this is a furious charge into Siren. Um, and Charmed Male will come into account because Rage is a fella. He likes what he sees. So Siren is at plus one defense. So that's Tack 11 versus the fives and those of Siren's three net hits. Enough for a momentous two damage and a push. Now I need to free up Siren really to have any chance um, of retrieving the ball from Benediction in a fashion that I like. Um, so what I want to do here is use Jack to try and Trident Tested uh, Rage away. So what I do is I sprint Jack in such a position that when he uses Trident Tested, it will hopefully push Rage directly away, freeing Siren. That's my plan at least. Idea being here, what I want to do is push Rage away. So that's attack four versus fours and ones. One net hit, one point of damage. Because why would a plan... Go to play, do what I want it to do. Oh, I just wanted to push him away, tried and tested and done, but no one point of damage instead. To add insult to injury, this of course triggers rising anger, giving him two extra points of momentum. <laughs> it's alright, I've got more influence, I can generate some momentum I'm sure. Oh, there is a counter attack from Rage, attack 8 versus 3 is in 1, 6 net hits is a knockdown. Down I go. No, I've got no momentum to clear it, otherwise I wouldn't need to do any of this in the first place. That plan says nope. Back over to the Union, uh, Gutter has herself a little jog. So she is tax 6 versus the 4s and O's of Siren. 4 net hits is a momentous 2 points of damage. Of course, I'm going to stick my little uh, Gutter summary up here. So she is going to heal due to life drink And also, because that is enough to take out Siren, there is now Fish 6, Union 8. Uh, the, uh, the score... I like where the score is right now, I'll be honest. I'm nice and close. I think I'm holding my own against the world's uh, third best Union player, even if he's not using his precious, precious black art. 
So thanks to Anatomical, Jack is twos and O's, so that is six net tax six, six net hits. That is enough for a momentous scything blow and a momentous one point of damage due to tough hide on Jack. So um, he will Jack will take three points of damage from scything blow, and Rage will take four points of damage from scything blow, thanks to uh, his own legendary. Sakana up the top takes a swing on Mink, so that's tack fives versus fours and O's. Four net hits is a momentous double dodge, getting him the hell away from her. Sakana then declares a charge at Benediction and Cover right at the extremity of both of their engagement ranges. Thanks to anatomical precision, uh, Benediction is only threes and ones against Sakana. Equally, he's not had the chance to get braced up yet, so he hasn't got that additional plus two. However, Benediction does have poise, so he declares a free counterattack against Sakana. So that's tack 8 versus 3s and 1s. 6 net hits is enough for a tackle and a momentous dodge. So Sakana dodges out of Benediction's um, engagement zone, so that counterattack entirely goes to the waste, free or otherwise. Sakana then hammers the ball into the Union goal, bringing the score now 10 to the Fisherman and 8 to the Union. Sakana's been an absolute joy to use in this game, doing exactly what you want from him. I used the point of momentum generated from the goal to run the length, uh, getting me a four inch dodge away from Benediction. Ball kicks out from the Union goal. How is it a kick out? There's no one there. I've never got that. Ricochet makes much more sense. Anyway, um, uh, lands just in front of Benediction after the scatter. So then, handy viewers, such as you are, you may notice a fully loaded mist stood on fast ground at the top of the screen. Um, it doesn't ease within six inches of Benediction, so there's motivation, there's an extra plus two movement from fast ground. He can drop down cover to give himself an extra plus two movement. Essentially, a whole bunch of widgets are utilised, and we wedge it, then uh, Mist runs the most of the length of the board, picks the ball up on the way, and hammers the ball into the back of the fisherman's goal, bringing the game to a close. So there we are, handy viewers such as you are, Fisherman 10, Union 12, um, enormously fun game against Jason from Singled Out. If you are unfamiliar with Singled Out, liar, um, you're not. They are one of the finest um, Guild Ball podcasts around. Not just because they um, uh, have frequently had me as a guest in the last few months, but also that they're not a ma massive pile of salt. Um, I would highly recommend uh, their more two most recent episodes. One with Russ talking about the sculpting process for Skill Ball, and second of all with Jamie Perkins and Bryce from Steamboat talking about SteamCon and the new Rookie League. Speaking of SteamCon, seamless segue there, Beard. Um, it is SteamCon this weekend. It is the uh, currently the 15th of November when this episode goes up, so it will only be a couple of days after that until SteamCon happens. I will be there in presence. I will be in there in presence. I'm, I'm going to be there, long and short of it. Um, if you see me, please do come and say hello if you want. If you don't want to, don't have to. I'm not going to force you to. If you've no idea who I am, then why are you listening to this bit? That's even weirder than normal. Anyway, if you are a handy viewer such as you are, please do come up. Um, and tell me as such, it would be delightful to meet you guys. If you are unaware what I look like, well then, I'm the one in the middle in the I Talk Nonsense Over Games of Guild Ball t-shirt. Either side of me, you'll see my good friends Dom and Panzer wearing t-shirts that read. If you cannot see, oh handy viewer such as I am, and all tooled up, making me a tool. These t-shirts may or may not be available in the near future, oh handy viewer such as you are. So if that is something to which you are may have a passing interest in, keep your eyes peeled and I'll do my best to tell you more as things do or do not develop. Speaking of Dom and Panzer, the segues are real. Um, we recently attended Jumpers for Guild Posts 3. Um, we had an absolutely fantastic time. Brilliant, brilliant team tournament run by Kev Bryant and his team down in Kent. Um, despite the environmental factors doing their very best to waylay our day, we had a brilliant time. You will find at the end of this video a link to the Beards on Tour, Beards on Tour, Beards on Tour uh, playlist um, where we chatted for ages and talked nonsense. If that is something of which you are interested, please to be going and having a look. Elsewhere on this channel, again, segues, professional, you will find a new Handy Tips for Oh Handy Viewers um, video playlist. There is one episode in there at the moment where I talk about how to uh, 
Memorize the difference between pass and move and give and go. These are not intended to be serious. <laughs> These are a stupid idea that I've had. I have deliberately made them as cheesy as hell with the most ridiculous, um, overly American music that I could find. Don't take them seriously. They are largely intended for my own personal amusement. If they amuse you as well, good. Finally, um, it may or may not have escaped your attention that I have used a great deal of this channel to be a dedicated resource for blacksmith players as we await the announce as we await the release of the first blacksmith box on the 17th of November. Um, it has just been announced as I'm recording this that the second box Mastercrafted Arsenal will be present at Steamcon UK in extremely limited numbers. Um, here the artwork is on screen. We've had horse gate already. We have now got flying dude <laughs> gate as people are wondering what the hell is going on like they've never seen a clear plastic peg before. <laughs> Um, this is naturally an incredibly pe exciting piece of news here um, over at Beer Minis. We, or I rather, there's no we, um, have been on board with the Blacksmith um, hype train since its very inception. Um, the Blacksmith were announced just as I was getting into Guild Ball and there is a certain aesthetic to them which I find very very pleasing given that I look like half of their guild um, or at least what I imagine their guild to look like. I have endeavoured to release preview videos of every single blacksmith card as it has become available. This will continue. On I will be travelling up to Manchester for Steamcon UK on the Thursday evening. I will be outside the venue um, at such a point that when it opens I hope to be amongst those that will be getting their hands on this box uh, in its extremely limited number. I'll be frank. I will shank a bitch um, that stands in front of me in that queue. I'll be there from very, very early. To wit, I will endeavour, oh handy viewer, such as you are, that one of the first things I do when I get my hands on this box is record videos for you of the two um, remaining Master and Apprentice models inside that box. I'm going to take my portable studio with me. Um, portable studio, it's a, it's, a, it's a laptop, let's be honest, and a microphone. Um, with me to Manchester so that I can do this. This will mean that essentially I have recorded videos in previewing the blacksmiths um, around in both hemispheres. I've did um, iron and ferrite whilst I was in Western Australia. I can see no reason why I shouldn't do the next two, whatever they should be so should be called, whilst up in Manchester. It has been an absolute pleasure to bring you the previews of these videos. Um, the blacksmiths continue to be an, a very exciting prospect for me. They will be making an appearance in their entirety in there as the 12 on this channel just as soon as they are fully painted. I am not going to put them up on grey plastic, so there will be a delay between me getting back from SteamCon and them being on the channel. But that is a thing that will be happening, and that is a thing that I am very, very excited about. So there we are, oh handy viewer, such as you are. Thank you for watching this uh, Don't Touch the Beard 15 with Jason from Singled Out. Um, you should be seeing on screen a beard. Please to be clicking if you wish to subscribe and be notified of when this nonsense is uploaded in the future. Equally, you will see playlists on screen both to the Blacksmith Preview, the Don't Touch the Beard web series and my new Beards on Tour series. Um, as ever, a handy viewer such as you are, I need a better outro.